How does the music sound? It sounds good. I can't wear headphones, guys, because I've got a big freaking wig on. Aiden doesn't have headphones in because you've got a big old wig on, but I can hum along to it so you can feel like you're listening to it. Do you notice how you didn't wait for me to answer? It's really beautiful. Guys, welcome back to The Hunger Games. You act like you weren't humming this all, like the whole time before. What do you mean I was humming it the whole time before? You've been singing that little... Oh, shit, started again. There we go. Sorry. God. <laughs> God. Guys, welcome back to The Hunger Games. Welcome back to what the Hunger a response Games. it has been. Wow. Yeah. Thanks Everyone for your, thanks loves for the support. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited about this. Like, I, I thought maybe we were going to be the ones that were really quite... Like, mm. we were, like everyone was going to be like, yeah, it's a good podcast idea, but people are, people are G'd for this. Yeah. Now people have expectations, which is even worse. People have high expectations. Yeah, it's not great. What are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? Oh, uh, don't know. Maybe get a studio. That'd be good. A mic stand would be nice. I don't have to fucking hold these things anymore. Yeah, my hand cramps up at the end. <sighs> yeah. Carpal tough. tunnel. It's tough. It's, it's really bad. tough, guys. We're in the trenches, guys. But I don't know. We'll figure out a way to get out of there. I mean, you know who's also in the trenches? Gallipoli. That, what? The Anzac soldiers. I was going to say the 24 tributes in our Hunger Games, but you, oh. you went a whole different route with that. Well, if any Anzacs are out there listening to the Nobody Asked podcast, I'd like to apologize for that crude comment. It wasn't crude. We, we know that our, most of our demographic is made up of Anzacs. Yeah, famously big with the, big with the Anzacs. Big famously with the veterans. an Anzac-centric podcast. Uh, international listeners, that's our like veterans. Yeah. Well, we ce- celebrate our veterans. Thanks, veterans. <laughs> Guys, use veteran. Code veteran 20 for 20% off. Yeah. Um, so I'm scaring myself again. Yeah, well, you, we should mention for those who are just listening, Eden has gone again all out with another Effie Trinket outfit. Somehow Lockie's put less effort in than ever. Um, I sprayed my hair blue last time and my hair stayed a tinge of green and blue for like days. You're wearing a wig. You wouldn't understand the struggle that I just had. What do you mean? I have crusty, crusties. I flew to Melbourne and I got my hair cut by this fantastic bar- a barber there, Tegan. And I, I, anytime I'm in Melbourne, I get him to cut my eggs. He's great. Yeah. Um, and he said to me, have you been in a pool? I was like, no. Because it was a little bit green. I'd had three showers by that point. You said it would come out in one shower and it didn't. You lied. You liar. Uh, yeah. Well, I really wanted to just do, do it. Do I need to get a fire extinguisher for your, for your pants? Seeing as they're on fire? Fucking fibber. But yeah, so I've this week I am wearing a blue jacket because um Blue is a stretch. It's like grey blue. It's a light blue. It's that, you know. It's a it's a respectable blue. Yeah, because Caesar Flickman one time wore blue and that is the extent of my it's outfit. I'm wearing one footy shorts. Time and you won't let it go. I'm not wearing any shoes. Neither am I. Aiden looks fantastic though. But Thank you. You look great, but I I I could call you out and just say well why don't you turn around and show them the back of the outfit which there isn't one yeah no You're okay there's not i had i had time and i thought okay well do i do i make just the top half of the outfit no i can make the bottom half because i'm gonna they're gonna see you know they see me sitting down um but are they gonna see the back of me no they're not it so re- yeah it just i've got my pajama shorts do you know how that's how rupaul does drag race rupaul 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 you know <laughs> Yeah, I know RuPaul. RuPaul. Um, apparently, like, you know, obviously she does the runway, whatever. Yeah. Um, Still haven't seen the show, so I don't know. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. You'd love it. I'm sure um, I would. And, and it's when they're doing the judging panel, apparently she's, like, you know, from the waist up in drag in these, like, beautiful gowns. Yeah. And it's, like, trackies waist down, apparently. Because they film you? for, like, 14-hour days. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Oh my god, the Hunger Games. We have to get back. We have so much to get through. Yeah. Well, today we're going to be going through. So very graciously, we uh, have reached out to a lot of the people involved in this Hunger Games. Not all of them. Some of them we don't know. Some of them I just feel like if you message them, they're never going to see it. So we've messaged a couple of them, and that graciously, everyone we reached out to said, "Yep, I will get back to you with some answers and some of my thoughts about being put in the Hunger Games." So everyone god, that we reached good. out to, thank you for being a good sport and saying. Yes, I would be happy to send something through. Now, did all 14 of those people send something through? No. No. But that's fine. But that's just because they're like... You're busy people. Yeah. You're influencing. We only gave them a few days notice. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, we got got some responses 
and we sent them through some questions about how they're feeling about being in the home games, who they might target. Oh, well, yes. Who they might align themselves with. We've got a very, like a variety of, that was a crazy way to say variety. We got a variety of answers. We got a variety. Of, we got a variety of answers. So I thought before we jump into it, mm-hmm. much like they do in the Hunger Games, they do these interviews where yes, on the season of the Flickerman show. Yeah, where they would you mind? Uh, well, we well, you know they they talk about how they're feeling about the games. We thought we've got eight here, and we might okay. I'm so excited. Sporadically go through these interviews and see some of them have sent through videos, which you'll be able to see the video version on Instagram as well. Yes. And some of them have just sent through voice recordings. And I thought we should go through it the same way they do it in the movie. Yes, absolutely. I'll just... District by district. Hold this little headphone up to my... um, We're going to be starting off really strong here. Now, I have not listened to all of these all the way through. I've made sure that I have a little bit of... Only like the first 30 seconds to get an idea of what it is. Because I want to listen to it with you for the first time. So we can get a genuine reaction. Mm -hmm. Um, So from District 1, we have All Right Hey who I had to ask, are you sure you want me to play this on the podcast? He's like, yep. Oh, yeah. So I'd like to introduce to All Right Hayes pre-Hunger Games interview. Oh, I'm so excited. Hopefully this plays. We've got this plugged into my laptop, so I'm hoping it plays properly. But ladies and gentlemen, District 1, Jewelry and Luxury Items, tribute number one, All Right Hay. Woo! Okay, first of all, it's an honour to be nominated, but I do feel like I am coming across as the underdog, which for me I love because so was Katniss. But Lockie did insinuate that District 1 is like the weakest district and then also... On t- can you not hear it? Can we turn it up? Can we, t- we can absolutely turn it up. Let's turn that shit up. Of that pretty much said that I'd be whoa, first to go whoa. given some of the really strong teams out there. Hey, I'll put, I'll, the strongest I'll, I'll, team... I'll go back. We missed go it back, Because it went crazy. Here we go. Sorry. Uh, Lockie did insinuate that District 1 is like the weakest district and then also on top of that pretty much said that I'd be first to go given some of the really strong teams out there. Did I say that? I don't recall you saying that. I, th- I think I said based on like when we had Cat Clark and Osher and Scott Tweedy and Millie, I was like, I think Josh and Matt and Matt aren't going to be able to survive those ones. So I didn't right. say that the weakest district. I, ha- I know what my weakest district is. I'll reveal that later. But... <laughs> I, you know, okay. anyway, Matt, go on. There's, there's a lot more. The strongest teams don't always win. And I'm happy to be the underdog of this season of the Hunger Games, okay? My secret weapon would actually probably be my mouth in more ways than one. Like, obviously, with the men, hello. And then with the women, I'm sweet talking you. Like, I'm working my way through the boys. Scott Tweedy and I were star-crossed lovers. Oh, my God. I stab him in his sleep. That's easy. You know, then I'm on to Robert Irwin. I'm cooking him a meal. I'm poisoning it. You know what I mean? Reese. That's a, that's a great strategy. That's a great one. That's already a great strategy. You little homemaker, you. Yeah, all right. Hey, he's going to, you know, bat their eyelashes towards the boys. So the, the plan already, stab Scott Tweedy in his sleep. Crazy. And poison. And poison Robin Owen. Poison our, Angel. Our little Robert. Our, pff, good luck. Ugh. Resourceful. Resourceful queen. Then mm. I'm ending up with Tom Smallwood and Lockie because I give a killer blowjob <laughs> to both of them. But then they find out and they kill each other over me because alpha males, there can only be one. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> also, may we add, all right, hey, has just gotten... Gallbladder taken out. Yeah, he might still be on painkillers. In the hospital. There's a full yeah. This, roaming the roaming the halls. Could you imagine like another patient or a doctor seeing him walk in the halls, going, "I'm going to stab stab Scott Tweedy and then kill st- Robert Irwin, I'm gonna and then I'm going to give him a killer blowjob." And it's like, "Oh, he's he's meant to be in the oh, other." Oh, he's gone loopy. He's gone crazy. They've gone crazy. <laughs> Where they let one of them out of the mental hospital. Yeah, this is a crazy one. Um, this continues, by the way. Um, then of course I use my mouth on the girls as well and I sweet talk them and, you know, create alliances and things. Cause I will be damned if I make an alliance with a man, that's not happening. So I'm thinking <laughs> that Abby Chatfield and I make an alliance and we are the final two. Like that just makes sense in my brain. You know what I mean? That's a strong alliance. It's not a bad, it's not a bad option. Yeah. All right. 
my God, so, thank you. Oh, okay. Me and her are good. Why Maybe me? it's a draw. Maybe we both win. Um, Mitchell Coombs, unfortunately, he dies, like, in the cornucopia within the first 12 seconds because he didn't listen to the rules properly. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm the one... Okay. <laughs> That's a really good point. That's a great suggestion. That is a Mitchell Coombs vibe, <laughs> is to step <laughs> off early. Unfo- no, I don't want to kill Mitch. But unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to put that into the odds. Also, oh, yeah. we forgot to even explain how... You want to quickly how explain. How it's going to work. Do you want to do it after all this? No, oh, because okay, it's going to okay. dictate uh, what we're listening to and for. Yeah. We're basically, it's, I, I don't know if this is actually how they do Dungeons and da- Dragons, but it's like tabletop, like basically we're going to be um, jotting down, a f- like putting in a few different things that could happen at any given moment to anyone and rolling a dice, a computer dice. Okay. Cause Lockie forgot his dice at home. It's fine. Um, but we're going to be rolling a dice and that is going to dictate the outcome because we thought about, we don't want to choose, you know, we want this to be it's, it's a, a little, fair it's up to, game. It's up to fate. May the odds be ever in your favour. Yeah. yeah, it's not May, Eden and Lockie's decisions. It's yeah. the odds. It's about the odds. Come on, grow up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so for, example, for example, we say, we suggest that Mitch Coombs steps off the thing early because he didn't listen to the suggestions. That's and then one what, of the options. And then so we roll the dice. We roll the dice. And how does the dice numbers so, work? Well, maybe we'll be like um, either he, yeah, it's a, it's a zero, like one to three. If it rolls a one to three, he unfortunately does step off early and gets blown up. But if it's. Three to six? No, it, one to three is... Oh, four to six. <laughs> one, so one to three, whatever we just said happens. Yes. Four to six four to doesn't f- happen. Or something else happens. Or he makes it to the happens. cornucopia, he runs away. Yeah. So if they roll... We're just going to give two options. A one to three, what we just suggested happens. Yes. Or we can come up with an alternative. Yes. Cool. Yes. All right. So that's fantastic. Uh, this this continues. Good. A, pre, a shout to All Right Hay, putting in a huge amount of effort, giving his take on the home games. Yeah, let's, thanks, Let's babe. continue. Yeah. I can pause it anytime. So you jump in whenever you want to comment. It was Cut Clark. Like, I can see that. You know Sorry. what I mean? Hell. Yeah, within the first 12 seconds because he didn't mm-hmm. listen to the rules properly. I'm thinking I'm the one who kills Cut Clark. Like, I can see that. You know what I mean? I think it would be <laughs> iconic and very, uh, again, underdog vibes. Like, I'm going straight for Cut Clark. See you later. Um, yeah, underdog vibes. I like the plus size, queer, probably eventually non binary person. You know, the world wants to see me win. I think it's 2024. Um, mm. I love the I love the idea that the Hunger Games is in any way woke. Yeah, it's not about representation; it's about killing children. Yeah, but also, yeah, why not make space? It's a little bit slow. Let's let's kill some more people of minorities. I love if the Hunger Games had gender neutral bathrooms. Oh, they do. They do. It's the outdoors. The yep. great outdoors. Yep. You know who's woke? Mother Nature. Mother Nature doesn't care about what you've got between your legs or no. who you are. No, no, no. She loves you nonetheless. No, she's going to send a bug right up there. Yep. No matter what. She knows that. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. So he's already come out and said he's going to kill Scott Tweedy, Robert Irwin, cause me and Tom Smallwood to kill each other, kill Cat Clark. God, there's a lot of And then uh, he's going to, he's assuming Mitch Coombs is going to (laughs) die. I don't know why that's so funny. He's also, so he just said, he said, just said Cat Clark. He wants to team up with Abby Chatfield. God, you got my like, goodness. Matt's, sort of, Matt's planned this out. Yeah, Matt's written the whole thing. Wow. All right. Who else was there? Millie Graham. Easy. She's an easy out. She's late to everything. She probably wouldn't even fucking show up for the thing. Um, couldn't find a dress to wear. That seems to be her problem all the time. So, best of luck to her. <laughs> you said it, not us. It is our podcast, but it's not us saying it. Wow. Oh, would, would she be eliminated if she didn't turn up? No, she'd be killed. Yeah, no, I but I mean, she should like eliminate me. You can't killed. not turn up. That's, I mean, it's probably her dream event. Why? Because they, they shove you in that elevator and they send you up. Yeah. There's no, there's no, I'm late. You can't be late, I guess. It would be so funny. Be so funny if, we, if she doesn't turn up to the Hunger Games. Yeah. Shout out, Milligram. See, no, this is, this was actually what I wanted to say about the, um, the parade. We'll go into that later. Okay. Oh, you want to go into, okay, you want to go into later, later. Later, all right. later. All right, so all right, Hay has added Millie Ford to his hit list as well. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Can you uh, guys understand why I listened to the first 30 seconds of this and then message Matt like, hey, are you sure you want to- You sure everything's you going to, in? You sure you want me to put all this in? He's like, yep. So fucking underdog, let's go. Oh, yeah. The underdog so far. Um, and then as far as sponsors go, like I feel like just take a look at my social media. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> Everyone sponsors me, doll. So 
You're what's so the difference funny. with the Hunger Games? Like they are, the brands are already fighting over working with All Right Hay. So I think add the Hunger Games to it and I'm the one coming out dead or alive. I'll be the richest one there. So, <laughs> you know, no issues with that, love. Um, and to the fans, if you don't support me at this point, that's just a homophobic hate crime. So True. work on that on your own time. And may the odds be in everyone's favour, but most importantly, mine. Wow. wow. That was what awesome. A, what a way to start. Wonderful. Wow. If that, I mean, if you weren't an All Right Hay fan before that. You are now. You're just thinking like, all right, I'll send, I'll send All Right Hay some weapons. Yeah. Wow. What a start. Oh, my gosh. Who's next? Re- a hot interview, that one. That was awesome. Next up, very, very, very excited about this one. We have from District 3 Technology, the one and only Osher Gunsberg. <laughs> that is so cool. He's uh, he's kindly thank you so um, much, sent in Osha. a detailed voice memo. So we'll listen to this one here G'day as well. Son, it's your dad, Osha here, down in Melbourne doing the comedy festival. It's your brother Wolfgang. He says hi. Um, what a sultry voice. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Get, go on, sir. What are my feelings about being selected for this influencer Hunger Games? I don't know, Lockie. I'm a 50 year old man in a pretend podcast battle with a bunch of people who are young enough to be my actual children um, who are probably far better at any kind of social media marketing or reach or whatever the fuck than I am, probably earning way more money than I could ever dream of. But, you know, I can sleep well at night because I can do things like, I don't know, eye contact, empathy, (laughs) conversation. I can recognise emotions in people's faces. Oh, and I can have a conversation with a person that has an opposing ideology to me without wanting to cancel them when they say something that makes me uncomfortable. So I think I'm okay. Holy shit. Oh, my God. I think I should just won the Hunger Games. I think I should have just won. <laughs> Guys, thanks for listening to this. <laughs> wow. As soon as you said, I can make eye contact with people. We're like, both fucking. crying. Dude, that's so funny. Oh, my God. That's so funny. It's not even done. He's like, that's halfway through. That's halfway. Come on. I mean, wow. Okay. God. Go on, Dad. Anything else? Is there anyone in particular I'll target to take out first or form an alliance with? Well, I think I've spent some time in the bush, like in the kind of places where if you don't take supplies with you, you'll die. So first up, it's got to be Robert Irwin. Mm -hmm. The man can wrestle crocodiles. The man comes from wildlife royalty. The man knows how to survive, where to survive. I'm pretty sure he knows how to kill. So, yeah. My strategy? I don't know, man. I'm flat out. I'm writing two and a half thousand words of fresh, you know, satirical news comedy every day down here at the Comedy Festival. Plug. Nice. My strategy is to keep fucking working. God, he's good you at what he does. You guys carry on with your little tick snaps or whatever the fuck you do. <laughs> and I'll be here. <laughs> Your tick snaps. What tick a dickhead. Snaps. I love him. Fuck, he's awesome. Oh, he's good. He's good. We've got 50 seconds left. Uh-huh. God, he's good. He's just, because they're all these, but the, everyone's going to have a very similar, you know, appeal to the social media game, put out some stories, but not him. He's been around the block. He's, it's not, this is not new to him. He had to try to get people to call in and text into Australian Idol to vote. Oh, yeah. You know he's how done hard, the hard they, yards. You know how hard it was for us to get people to send in suggestions. He, he convinced Australia to send in suggestions. Wow. But all right, let's continue. Trying to create something with actual human beings in the room where I look at them in the eye and engage with them emotionally. You should try it sometime, you wusses. <laughs> Do you have any final words to the fans and sponsors out here as I head into the games? I don't know. Look, if you really want to waste all your money on some kind of multi-bet that will destroy your grocery and rent bill all in one fell swoop while you're trying you know, have a multi-leg situation that involves NRL, AFL and obscure Singaporean ping-pong matches. <laughs> Knock your socks off, mate. But um, don't put your money on me. Put it on someone else who's got an OnlyFans account and a great ass. <laughs> I'm an old cranky man. I love him so much. Love you, son. I'll say hi to your mum. You know what I mean. Osha Goodsburg, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, He's still got it. I don't think he ever lost it. Guys. He never bloody lost it. Go see Osha down at Melbourne Comedy Festival and oh, wow. come see me at Melbourne Comedy Festival. Okay? Wow. I'm fucking crying with laughter. 
eighth till the twentieth at the Catfish. <sighs> in at nine fifty. You will notice that throughout a lot of these April. a lot of these interviews, there are people subtly plugging <laughs> their shows. Well, yeah. Because everyone's like, "Can I, can I talk about my show?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, go on." But yeah, wow. Okay, so Osha, he's almost he's almost Hamish. He's about oh, as close to Hamish totally Abernathy is. as we have. He totally Guy who is. doesn't care. He's like, I'm not going to win. But and he's like, I'm a cranky old man. And, and he, he goes, thinks he's washed maybe, up, but it's like, no, you're not. No, no, you're probably the, the best of the bunch. You're wow. actually the strongest one here. Simple. Simple. That was awesome. Team up with Robert Owen. So simple. Wow. He just did an interview with Robert Owen on his podcast and it's uh, excellent. Amazing. Wow. That was a – I'm so glad I didn't listen to all these all the way through and I waited for you because that was – No, that's awesome. That was unbelievable. All right. Next up we have – Tilly Oddie Black, who has sent in a video, so this will be on the Instagram, um, but you'll just be able to hear the audio of it to start with. Uh, so Tilly, what are your initial feelings and emotions after being selected for the Influencer Hunger Games? That's Jess Fuchs for us. Hello, Jess. For this one? There's no rate. You didn't, you didn't listen to it. Sorry, I was excited. Initial feelings and emotions after being selected for the Influencer Hunger Games. Sorry, what was the rate for this one? There's no rate. It's just you're doing it for free. Oh, uh... Thanks. Okay, um, I guess happy. Great. And um, is there anyone in particular you target to take out first or form an alliance with? When you say free, like no budget? No, nothing. Not even for hair and makeup? No, or... nothing at all. It's completely for free. Oh, God. Um, okay, uh, Sam Fricker, I guess. He's somebody. <laughs> I'll yeah. kill him. Oh, he's supposed to be the partner that you... Yeah, cool, cool. I'll kill him. Okay, great. Um, and any strategy... Yes, thank you for asking. I like to post during prime time. I just find that that's, it works well for me. I recommend it. others do it. Okay. And do you have any final words to the fans or sponsors out there as you head into the game? Yes, I just released merch on tilliotiblack.com, so buy up. It's just sitting there. <laughs> thanks, Jess. That's all I have time for, so you can just see yourself out. Oh, okay, great. Um, really good thanks. today. Thanks so much. Bye. Tilly Black, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful. Wow, in character. In character. Wow, or is it? That's, wow. up, to, that's up to the sponsors. What do you like better? Yeah, who knows? Wow, that was... I just love it. I think the effort to go into the video. You've obviously... There's some sort of a script here. No, no it's so not. Good. This is a real interview. What am I talking about? Yeah. Don't worry about what I just said. Tilly Black. Wow. Hell yeah. I mean, the, the level of... Investment makes me question how she's going to perform in the games. Me too. Who's next? Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Um, we have a quick interview here from Winnie, the cattle dog. We interviewed the dog. We interviewed the dog. We have a, it, Oh, good. Interviewed the dog. There's a dog. Oh, she's so she's cute. Adorable. I don't want to get her. God, God. It's not up to us. It is. She's done a quick interview here. Just. I can't believe you put that nice <laughs> dog. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. Do you want Thanks, Winnie. Thanks for sending that in. And uh, shout out to her owner, April, for helping out with that video, obviously. Shit, that's that's a, a crazy thing to agree to. That's a crazy thing to agree to. <laughs> to be like, yeah, we're putting your dog in the <laughs> Hunger Games. I, I think I asked when she was like, am I in it? I'm like, no, just the dog. But you can tell this is an influence dog because she's even filmed this during golden hour. I was going to say, that's got, one of the most beautiful dogs I've ever seen. Yeah, they've got the sunlight shining on that dog. But Winnie, that's, I mean, throwing out some big accusations there in that video. God. Didn't know she was arrogant like that. Wow. Very cocky. Who's next? I'll Who's cry next? if I think about the cute ass dog. Who's next? Who? we got the guy who apparently is going to destroy himself by accident. We've got Mitch Coombs, who sent, lovingly yeah. sent in a video as well. Hell yeah. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Um, I don't want it to go unnoticed that I am using a proper microphone just to demonstrate how seriously I'm taking this. And much like you too. No mic stand. I'm just fucking raw dogging it. Okay. <laughs> All right. We don't need to be called out like that. Okay, well. Every, okay, well. every time you hear... That is us adjusting our hands because we don't have a mic stand We're yet. working on it. These are not mics that are meant to be held. Unlike me. I'm meant to be held. I'm meant to be held. Continue, Mitch. And also, um, I'll plug it for the people who can't see it. He asked me, is it okay if I film this in front of my, is it just me, the podcast sign? And I was like, absolutely you can. So in the background in neon light is the 
Is It Just Me podcast sign. So go listen to Is It Just Me podcast. He's a hustler. It's great He's to a see. hustler. A fantastic head of hair. Mitch, continue. Um, where are these questions? <clears throat> what are your initial feelings slash emotions about being selected for the influence of Hunger Games? Um, look, I'm absolutely thrilled mm. to have been selected for the influence of Hunger Games because I adore you both individually oh. as well as this podcast. You are essentially risking my slaughter, which is a bit of a fucking weird way to treat a fan just <laughs> quietly. But no, I'm stoked to be on board. Um, I think you might have fucked up a little bit oh. with selecting the districts because you put me on electricity and power or whatever the fuck it is. Let's not forget that I'm a farm boy. <gasps> oh. Grain production. <gasps> Hello. He's got us there. That's true. That's true. Where, where's Mitch? Come take over the pod. We don't yeah, know what Mitch, the hell we're you doing. take over. Mitch, I'm, this is me putting the mic down. Our, our podcast is going to get absorbed. Yeah, it's going to. Bye, Mitch. Oh, that's. Is it just me? This is what that's going to become. It is just Mitch. It's just him. He takes over. I mean, that's true. Oh, he does go to the country a lot as well. Oh, my God. How do we miss that? Yeah. I mean, you picked him. I didn't. Yeah. So you didn't do your research. That's true. Mitch, that's Eden's fault. He's from Bogan Gate. You're a Bogan Gate. That's what the town is called. Yeah, I know. You're a Bogan Gate. I am a Bogan Gate. Mitch, Not anything? Really. Mitch, anything else? Weaponry. I used to go hunting for God's sake. I, and I was a gay boy raised in a small country town. I've got a small blade on me at all times. Um, a gay boy who goes hunter, hunting. Literally slay. Slay. Thank you. Slay. Because like slaying animals. Anyway, keep going. Yes. You've got to learn to protect yourself, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, two is fuck off. Sorry, that's my cat being feral. Um, <laughs> is there anyone in particular you'll target to take out first or form an alliance with? Um, look, in terms of forming an alliance, I did get a little bit of FOMO when you put um, – Maddie, not Maddie. Fuck, I nearly said Maddie McCann. Um, Molly McCrayan and Blake Pavey. When you put those two together, I did have a bit of FOMO because I think they're both brilliant. And I also did hear you describe them as the funniest district by far. Oh, I said by a mile. I, I have believe. something to say about this duo oh. later. Okay. When we, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we did say funniest duo by a mile. They are the, okay, now I'll say it. Well, who's Mitch paired up with? Mitch is with, let's check. I think Mitch is with Abby Chatfield. He is. What the hell? That's the best pairing ever. Yeah. I, I, still, I still think, I think entertaining, yeah. I think, I think comedy wise, Blake sure. and Molly still have you. Yeah, I want to talk Sorry, about... Sorry, Mitch. I'm going to say Go see his comedy show, which definitely won't be as good as Molly and Blake's if they had one together. Okay. Well, I want to talk about Blake Pavey, Molly McCran team. We've, we said, wow, this is one of the strongest teams because they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're funny. They could... They could trick people, the yep. jesters. I will say, Molly's probably the most unorganized person I've ever get, I've ever met. And Blake Day's oh, fuck. I'm just gonna say that. Whole thing. Molly is probably. Mo you want to have another go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Molly is probably the most unorganized person I've ever met. Amazing. And Blake has cystic fibrosis. Mm. So. And if you think that's harsh, just wait till you hear Blake's video package that he sent in. Blake has also sent one in. Oh my god, that's we'll so exciting. To. Mitch, continue. I can't say that didn't hurt, but also I can't really argue because they're both fucking brilliant. So, yeah, I'll, I'll align with them any day of the week, Del. Wow. Um, question three, any strategy? I don't have any strategy going into this. I've never seen The Hungry Games. Um, I don't know if that's going <laughs> to risk my chances of getting slaughtered or nice. going to hang, whatever it is you do. But, no, I've really got no <sighs> idea what the fuck's going on right now, to tell you the truth. But, again, stoked to be part of it. Um do you have any final words to the fans and sponsors out there as you head into the games? Look, um, even though I'm stoked to have been paired with Abby Chatfield, Huge. I do have some – I do – I'll start that one again, sorry. Even <laughs> though I'm thrilled – Just letting you know, Mitch, I'm not cutting that out so people are going to see that you stumbled on your words. Embarrassing for you. Mitch, you and me both. Come on. Yeah, come on, brother. Anyway. Be paired with Abby Chatfield. Um, I do have some concerns about us being paired together because both of us have been quite transparent about our struggle with burnout. So between the two of us, if we're expected to fucking generate electricity or whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> there's every chance it could just be like you just oh. have to survive in the arena. Mitch. He really doesn't know what the Hungry Games are, does he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right, hey, wasn't wrong. No, he doesn't know the rules. He doesn't know. He what the really fuck doesn't is going know the rules. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, excellent stuff. It still goes. Let's, let's let him rap. Chook, I'm knackered. Can you be fucked? No, I can't be fucked either. You know what I mean? But also having said that, um, I think Abby and I both have it within ourselves to take stupid shit seriously. Sorry to label this stupid shit, but mm-hmm. I'm all about it. Make no mistake. So let us be. Let's. Uh, this is stupid shit. Yeah. No. This is the stupidest thing collectively we have ever done. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. Oh yeah. I think underestimate Abby and I at your own peril because we fucking play to win. Okay. She won. Let's not forget. She won. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Mm. And I won the Thursday night chook raffle down at the bowling club back in January Equally last impressive. year. Haven't won since, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> love you all much, Lee. Let the games begin. Go easy on me. Oh, Mitch, Mitch I love you so much. Wow. What a legend. Go see Mitch whenever he's doing stand-up or Go listen to Is listen It Just to Me, podcast. the podcast. Wow. Mitch, I mean, the, the, him and All Right Hay have – as it's like they've had a conversation without even talking to each other. They can – I believe they could – communicate telepathically if they tried hard yeah. enough. All right, Hay said he won't even know the rules. Mitch just openly said, I don't know the rules. All right, Hay said he'll be the first to go. And Mitch said, people are going to underestimate me. Fuck. Wow. Who's next? I mean, also him, him teaming up with Blake and Molly. I like it. I like Danger. it a lot. Next Danger. up we have the very talented, very wonderful April Clocks. Uh. Greetings all, it's April Clocks reporting in, proof. Proof that I am livestock, I'm made for this. I'm very honoured to be here. Very. She's o- holding a chicken in the video, yes. mind you. To be uh, out in the field, I was born I was born to be in the woods, chasing people around, hunting people down, and generally being a freak and biting ankles. I do have a plan, I do have a bit of a strat here going. Um, I do have my eyes on District 7. I think District 7, they are going to require the protein, the nutrients, uh, the bioavailable nutrients to keep up their figures, keep up their form. District 7 being anabolic Gabe and Mackenzie McIntyre. So she's she's right there. She's so right. Yeah. If she can keep them she's fair, so keep smart. them happy. She's yeah. so smart. Eden's falling in love. And I do plan on immediately domesticating the Grusling. So what's going to happen is I'm going to be running, running and gunning, uh, creating a little bit of like a black market trade system and hopefully just kind of lie, steal and deceive my way to the top. Because uh, come on, what? Me? I couldn't, what? I wouldn't kill anyone while they were sleeping. I don't know. That's not possible. I'm like really normal and regular and you got nothing to be afraid of. Uh, additionally, also with Winnie, we're going to have Winnie uh, running in. Winnie's going to be doing most of the groundwork in terms of uh, taking people down. Lockie did mention, you're like, oh yeah, cute dog. That's fine. That's chill. That's normal. That's not a cute dog. That's not cute. You know, cattle dogs, cattle dogs, they're made to protect the farm. They're made to protect the fucking farm. Okay. And that's exactly what Winnie's going to do. She was made for it. Uh, thank you, April, for so generously donating uh, your dog that you love mm. and care for. Thanks, and April. have uh, built a beautiful platform with. Um, I'm going to use her to kill people. <laughs> I'm going to kill people. So thanks. Cheers. Um, honored, honored to be here again. And yeah, let's, let's see how this goes. Robert Ir- Irwood and I, I think there's going to be, there's going to be some kind of weird beef there. You know, we got <laughs> I see that. Actual, actual uh, animal keeper versus mm. uh, weird, freaky online Animal keeper, you know, that's going to be here. I'm sure I'm sure he's going to gatekeep. We'll see. Maybe he won't, but if he does gatekeep, uh, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to put down the, uh, the, the boot. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to kill him. I'm <laughs> sorry. May the uh, odds ever be in your favour. And, yeah, if anyone wants Grusling, uh, looking for, to buy Grusling, I've got uh, a pound of Grusling for 100 GP. <laughs> Let me know. Send DM, private DM only. Uh, emails, okay, as well. And, yeah. Good luck. April is going to be, like, sitting in the middle of the river, playing the ukulele, like, having the time of her life. I feel like she'll thrive in the Hunger Games. It'll be, it'll be that'll be her hot girl summer. Yeah. Is the Hunger Games. She's going to look so peaceful. I, you can tell this is, everyone in this is influencing because I love that every single one of these has been, like, also plug this thing that I want to sell. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> oh, but April, so she wants to potentially start beef with... Robert, Robert Owen. But I love the fact that she's like, I'm going to use Winnie to do the groundwork. She's she got a sense of smell better than anyone else in there. Exactly. It should be noted, though. She's going to smell people. Yeah. It should be noted, though. She was talking about, like, how she's built for it. She's a, you know, cattle dog. Mm-hmm. Winnie is famously known for not being able to be a cattle dog. She's a cattle dog that is scared of cattle. She's scared of cows. Yeah, it doesn't So she doesn't work as a cattle dog. 
Okay. She's well, a full-time influencer. She is to other dogs what I am to... She's a bimbo dog. What, yeah, she is to what other dogs as to what I am to my extended family. Them doing actual work and me being an influencer. Yes. Yeah. That was excellent. Thank you, April. Thank you, April. April Klukes. We have two more. Mm-hmm. Our second last one comes from... I mean, I didn't think I'd have an erection this early in the podcast, but we've got Tom Smallwood. Hell yeah. Who sent in a video. Tom he's, Smallwood making big wood. Tom Smallwood causing t- my big wood. That's what I just said. Nah, I said it better though. Anyway, um, it ain't that ain't that a, a, a look at society. A woman makes a hilarious joke and a man steals it and then claims it as his own. Isn't that so fucked up, man? Yeah, you can't say anything anymore. I agree, Eden. That's what you're saying. You can't say anything anymore. And you should be allowed to say whatever you want. My God, Thanks. you are right, Lucky. Good. Okay. Uh, we have Tom Small. Play the, play you you can't see, but Tom is lovingly wearing his apron. He didn't need to do that. He's, he's in character. He's in. He's already selling himself. And I'm, I'm, I'm a buyer. And I'm buying I'm the it. highest bidder. <laughs> What am I feeling after being selected for the Influencer Hunger Games? Well, obviously my initial feeling is fear. But then my second feeling was excitement because I'm not scared. I'm not scared of the Hunger Games. Mm. Hunger Games? More like the I'm so full from eating so much games. (laughs) Anyone in particular that you'll target to take out first or form an alliance with? I'm going to try to take out the Clark family but leave Kat alive (laughs) and try to form an alliance with Lockie. I think Bobby and I could use Lockie's skills. We could use his brawn, we could use his intelligence, and the fact that he's running the games is a little bit of a plus. Mm. Any strategy. I think it's obvious that Robert Owen's gonna have his motorbike that he rides around in Australia zoo. So I'm gonna get on the back of the motorbike, he's gonna ride us straight into the cornucopia, I'm gonna grab as many things as I can, I'm talking spears, knives, water, any small animals that may be walking around the area. Is he gonna grab Winnie? We're putting in it. We're, it's one of the that's options. A gr- that's a great suggestion today. Write it down. Jumping it on the down. back of... Are, are we sending Robert up on his motorbike? Yeah, he's Robert Owen. He can have whatever he wants. Absolutely. Continuing. Okay. He's going to carry that and he's going to ride us off into the distance where we'll make camp and plan our missions. Final words. Yeah, watch out. I'm coming for everyone. I'm coming for all of you next. The password to my credit card is 1974. <laughs> That's so funny. What the fuck? That's so funny, man. All right. Well, Tom Smallwood oh, coming in oh, in that was te- really hot funny. and intense. So what did he, what did he say? Uh, yeah, he's gonna come. He's gonna team up with Robert Owen. Everyone wants to team up with Robert Owen. Yeah. He wants to jump on the Mr. back. Mr. Popular. But also, he has a plan with Rob because everyone's like, oh, I just want to be with Rob. He goes, No, no. He's got a motorbike. We're gonna get on the motorbike. We're gonna get everything from the cornucopia. Then we're gonna go set up camp. I told you these two would be. A strong, strong district. Mm. Amazing. Ah, I just had a Who's next? Come large on. sip of water. I had to just wet my whistle right there. He's got a wet whistle and he's not afraid to use it. Oh, I'll, I'll whistle over your wetness. Um, next we have finally our final, <laughs> our final video of the day, lovingly sent in by Blake Pavey, who Eden, as mentioned before, um, is... Much like every every news outlet who ever writes an article about him starts off with terminally ill comedian, which I'm sure he loves. I know he loves that. He so loves that. Blake Pavey, here he is. Hey guys, uh, it's Blake here, and I apologise for my appearance. I've seen better days, as Pete Murray would say, but it's just because I've spent the last 12 hours of my life up all night trying to strategize for these fucking Hunger Games that I've been forced into. <laughs> so initial feelings, not great. I don't feel the best about my chances thus far. I, even though I am in District 12, I feel like the rue of this Hunger Games. I feel like everybody looks at me like, oh, my God, he's so cute. This gun's definitely going to die first. That's the initial feeling I'm getting from scouting the tribute pool, which takes me to my first target slash alliances. Cat Clark, Scott Tweedy, Abby Chatfield, I will do anything to team with you, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to put that filler out there right now. But if you don't want to team with me, Everybody else, please fucking kill them first because I refuse to lock horns with those fan bases. They are more ruthless than the Gestapo in 1942. So, honestly, that's my strategy as well. Just try to team with the biggest, most ruthless fan bases. And that's it. Final words to sponsors. Fucking help. Very Blake good. Pavey. Very good. Uh, he's, he's always touring. You go watch his shows as well. Oh, oh my those goodness. Those were awesome. <laughs> those were awesome. Thank you to everyone who sent those in. 
Fuck, he makes some good points though. We said the Cat Clark family fan base are ruthless and you either want to be with them and you don't want to be against them. Oh, yeah. Or you yeah. want to get rid of them quick. You know, like go up against the besties. Wow. I mean, Blake, shooting for the stars. He wanted to be yeah, wow. teamed up with Abby Chatfield, Scott Tweedy and the Clark family. <sighs> God. I mean, it's reminiscent of early, early Australian TikTok days and I'm sure Blake will love me bringing this up. When he was a part of the first Australian hype house. Hey, what? Are you not aware of the Australian hype house? Who was in it? Um, uh, is, is headed up by Jamie Zhu, famous for his online street interviews where he asked uh, thoughtful questions like, what's your body count? What's the worst name? Who's the cutest boy in school? Kiss or slap, etc." And they had... I... Please go on, but I, I have a major regret. Oh, but, uh, yeah, no, there was – I remember Blake was like 18. Or he was literally in his school uniform, I think, when he went to this oh, house. Oh, wow. And it's all these people just doing dances and stuff. It's horrible. If you if you were in – I know some people who are in that house and I've become friends with them now. You all know that was terrible. That was largely one of the most embarrassing things in social media history when it comes to Australia. I can't, but, I'm going to look this up afterwards. Yeah. Oh, Do you know what Australian I realized? Hype, it was like – the thing was it wasn't even a hype house. They literally were at this Airbnb for – a day and they're all filming stuff together and it was just amazing that there was all these people there and not one of them made a single good video doesn't surprise me at all and if any of you are listening and want to disagree and tell me hey man you're being a bit rough hey send send, show, send, sh- it in. send me the good video send it oh, in. No, send me the one you think is good and we'll play it on the pod and we'll have a look yeah do you know what i realized congrats blake uh, i was just thinking about street- australian hype house founding member street interviewers is it? we had the option to put fonzie gomez in that arena and we forgot <sighs> Could have been in. I don't know how, how would have he performed. I don't think we can afford him, to be honest. I think if I messaged him on Instagram, he'd be like, it's going to cost you about $1,000 for a reply, mate. I don't think we could have got him in there. We don't have that budget. Do you reckon he's, um, what's the age range on this? I guess Osh is in it, but mm, I mean, Fonsi Gomez is getting up there. <laughs> what no is one, he? 18? 30? No one 35? knows. 35? No one really knows, do they? 24. I don't know. 30? I've, I've heard he's, 30. I've heard 18. Is he 30? Wow. For those listening, that's an industry secret. Everyone has um, everyone has theories public about how ages. Old. No, seriously, everyone has public ages and it's not how old they are. It's fucked. Yeah. Well, not everyone. I'm like, 43. Yeah, I'm at like 82. It's crazy. I'm yeah. still up and around. You don't look a day over 84. Thank you. Do you know what's crazy though? Osh is 50 this year. I, that, I mean, it checks fa- out. He looks fantastic though. He looks great Doesn't, for 50. I thought he would have been like early 40s. Yeah, but it checks out. Like, he's because he's been around for so long. Yeah, literally. If you, I sure, I I know you listened to the last episode, so if you're listening to this one, sorry for calling you old. You, I think you're youthful. Amazing. Yeah, he's gonna, right. he's gonna text me and he's gonna be mad. So that was the interviews. I think they were great. What that was amazing. I mean, if we get more sent in um, over the next couple of days, we'll be sure to put them on the pod, or we'll even add them into here. But we won't have us reacting to them. But either mm-hmm. way, if we get some more, we'll make sure that you guys can try to hear them. Let's power through this. Wow. I think we've got to go. I'm going to give us a, a short rundown of mm-hmm. if you if you guys have seen the movie, they do a big parade like on on a chariot, yep. like a horse drawn chariot, mm. and you know uh, Katniss is dress. It's on it's on fire. It's on the girl on fire. The girl on fire. Uh-huh. Pretty awesome. Um, and. So I, th- I just wanted us to have like a little talk about what we think the districts would wear. Absolutely. Because it has to be sort of with um, on theme. Yep. Josh and Matt um, for District 1. District 1 whose who's, uh, district is luxury. Are they dressed as a couch? I think, they, I think they've got like 58 unnecessary lamps all over them. Yep. No, that makes sense. I think there's too much going on. Yeah. I think that, I think, I think that chariot could do with some fucking editing back. Yeah, I think that could. It less is more with oh, yeah. that chariot. Oh yeah. What about oh, yeah. all right, hey? All right, hey. I think he's wearing the, <laughs> the exact, hospital gown. The hospital <laughs> gown. <laughs> because he's, he's still hospital. gonna get his gallbladder out. <laughs> As the chariots are going by, he's still just going. I'm gonna kill this person, and then I'm gonna stab this one in their sleep. His voice memos are still going. Yeah, he, the, the, he's still sending them. He's taken up all my data. Mason, also, all right, hey. Thank you so much for sending that through. That was hila- all of them were hilarious. Oh yeah, they were so awesome. entertaining. Oh, my God. District 2, Masonry and Defense. So we've got Cat Clark and Scott Tweedy. Mm-hmm. I would love to see Cat Clark and Scott Tweedy in full, like, 
knight armor. I was about to say the exact same thing. I think that'd be sick. A la Zendaya. A la Zendaya. When she wore what that. I'm to, to the June yep. too. Yep, exactly. Hell. I was about to say that. Yeah. Knights are showing up. That would that'd make be so sick. sense. I think Kat would look awesome. I think Scott would look awesome. Oh, Kat would absolutely show up, Scott. Mm -hmm. Kat would. Shout out Kat Clark. Gave me real estate advice the other night. Thank you. We sat next to her and I was like, hey, this thing. And she was like, I have all the knowledge you need. So mm -hmm. shout out her for that. Mm -hmm. District 3, General Electronics. Mm -hmm. But Millie Ford, Millie Graham, and Osher Gunsberg. Okay. Yep. Again, Millie is not making it to that to that event. She's done it. She's got to find a dress. We can't perpetuate this unfounded rumor that All Right Hay has started. Follow her on Instagram. You will see all about it. Um, and I think Osha. Oh, General Electronics. I think it'd be awesome if like that his chariot was one of those like almost like Spy Kids esque like or, like you know almost Tron looking mm. like it's like got a big freaking egg like roof. Right. It's all like robotic. It's like looks like Tron. I'd like if they had like holograms of him throughout the years standing behind him. Oh, wow. Like Australian Idol. Wow, that's like a, good. Like an evolutionary chart, but it's just different versions of him throughout the years. That's cool as hell. Yeah. God, District 4 Fishing, Tilly Oddie Black and Sam Fricker. Both in Sam Fricker's branded cosies. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Amazing. That's, that seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, great. And they're both drenched. Do you know... Oh just yeah, dripping. well drenched. Well, so you know how um for you know uh, red carpet events, you know what they do to make you know how people it looks like they have like wet hair, like mm -hmm. when girls have that wet hair look. Yeah, it's either like a lot of the time it's lube. Really? Because wet, like it'll dry. If it's wet hair, if you if it's wet with water, it'll dry. Doesn't lube dry? Sorry guys, I've never had sex. Does lube dry? Well, actually, I don't know, but apparently that's what they use. Or like oil. It's like oil. Yeah. Right. Do you know what was hilarious? So, guys, I went to the Challenges premiere the other night, which was that new Zendaya film. Zendaya was there. It was awesome. It was really That's cool. So Watched awesome. the red carpet, took photos, all that. And obviously, they send everyone in and then a car comes and drops Zendaya off. And we have like a live stream on the TV. So, we can see all this happening. Yeah. And they've obviously like cleared everything out so that she can have the red carpet to herself and all the photos for herself because otherwise she's going to get swarmed. For sure. So funny because the whole point is like everybody is just waiting for Zendaya to arrive. <laughs> and obviously it has turned up late, but at the same time, is someone playing music? It's the ice cream truck. Is there? We might have to pause the pod. No, no that's, that's hilarious. Can you guys hear the ice cream truck? Shh. I don't think they can. It's gone now. So everyone's waiting for Zendaya and they've cleared it all out. And I'm looking on the screen and I'm like, the fuck is that behind Zendaya? And it was Sam Fricker. <laughs> it turned up late to the premiere, so it just looked like they had to get Zendaya through the photos so we could then have Sam Frick take photos in the red cup. That's awesome. Oh, my God, it was so fun. I was like, finally, Sam Good Frick you, has Sam. arrived at the movie that he's not in. The man we're waiting for. Rushing Zendaya through photos. My God. District 5, power slash electricity. Mitchell Coombs and Abby Chatfield. Hell, yeah. I don't know about this one. I, I think oh, they're gonna, they just look so good. I think they'd be in, like, maybe, like, a matching like outfit together, like mm. wearing the same thing, not like a boy and a girl version. I think they're both. I think just based off his interview, um, Mitch is wearing, and is it just me, the podcast branded suit? It's just got and the And Abby's logo. wearing a, it's a lot podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, a, it's a, every time is a time to plug. Yeah. Power, power plug. Absolutely. Pretty good. You worked it in there. District six transportation. Oh, we forgot about tube girl. What do you mean about Tube Girl? I just forgot she was in this. Yeah, no, I did too. And Ned Brockman. I uh -huh. forgot about District 6 altogether, actually. Transportation. I mean... How dare you? Transportation. Ned Brockman. I think you have to keep him in his trademark high-vis shirt, yeah. the shorts, the puma, all just all puma. Yeah. And Tube Girl is on a train next to it. They're chariot. literally about... Like, they're so on brand for this. Yeah, it's so easy. Yeah, District 7, Lumber... Anabolic Gabe and Mackenzie McIntyre. I want Lumberjack. I want Slutty Lumberjack. You want Slutty? I want Slutty Lumberjacks. Like the, the, the guy on TikTok like, who chops wood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the axe. They just... And they're swinging axe around. They're, they're taking the overalls they've off. They've got like, yeah, they've got like a shorts and like lederhosen maybe. Yeah. It's them grunting every time they swing the axe. Oh, all right, let's get it this time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she's a tough girl. District 8. You ever seen those videos? Yeah. You watch them? No. Do anything for you? No. Yeah, neither. Like, it makes me laugh. It's very funny. Because it's so, like... But also, I couldn't imagine... I hate anything that you're supposed to watch that is so obviously a thirst trap. 
but it's like secret thirst trap. Like what you know, he's in those clay, it's like I clay ax- wheel, those clay wheel people. Yeah, it's like oh, I accidentally stop was finger sexual. the clay. Stop, stop fingering the clay like that. Get clay out. doesn't require all that. You don't have to. Why have you put a butt plug in the bowl? Li- <laughs> don't use your tongue. <laughs> you tongue the clay. Just That's tongue a, out of the clay. That can't get taste your tongue good. out of the clay. That's yuck. Get your tongue out of the clay. God. Okay. District Eight. Ooh. Textiles. Mm. Riley Passfield and me. Look, I think Riley and I go hand in hand. Stereotypically, us. I think we're in some like it's impressive that we made it, but it still it's still looks cursed. It's cursed. I think yeah. we're both looking a bit cursed. A la like her Dobby. Like her slutty Dobby outfit. Her, yeah. What do you guys, you got to find, I reckon, you know what I think you guys do? I think you both do like a slutty Caesar Flickerman. Oh, yeah. Like imagine Caesar Flickerman, but drag. Yeah. I think we go as like. Because it'd be real F you to impersonate someone like President Snow. Mm. So yeah. I, I keep calling every ep, like outfit just slutty. Yeah, no, a slutty, slutty President Snow would be fun. That would be but really funny. But then they funny. would kill you off. We would have to be. Well, I mean, that's what they so thought. That one's up that's, for grabs. that's what I'll they thought Riley. about at Katniss when she put herself on fire. Like, I'll ask Riley what we were right. You text her. District nine is green. We got Lockie and the entire Clark family. The Clarks. I think it's them dressed up the same in me, just in cat's clothes. I think you're wearing that. You think I'm wearing this? I think you're wearing. But yeah, you dressed as cat as if, if that's awesome. Just me. It's like it's what, just the Clarks. It's just the Clarks. Yep. Yeah. District 10 is Livestock, April Clocks and Winnie the Dog. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're going like, you know, like Ren Fair, like medieval oh, fair. Oh, my God. Winnie in like a little. Oh. oh, we can't kill her. Oh, my God. No, we can't. I've already written how I think Winnie dies. That's the sad thing. I already have an idea of what happens. Believe you. District 11, Agriculture, Tom Smallwood, Robert Irwin. Ooh, but are they got to be in the Australia Zoo uniforms. Yeah, I think they are. Absolutely. But Tom's also comes fitted with an apron. Cool, like a khaki apron. Yeah. Oh, Tom, you got to get a fucking you get a khaki, khaki apron, apron. Bro, with a little Australia Zoo logo on it. Hell yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Lucky last District Twelve, Molly McCran and Blake Pavey. The squad. The squad. What, you, what would they? I've got no idea for this one. You've got no idea. Yeah, I generally. I got nothing. I'm just assuming they'll turn up in their usual clothes. Yeah, it'll be the same stripy blue shirt that Molly's been wearing for the last six years of knowing her. And Blake wearing a regular t-shirt with a flannel over the top. Yeah. And long jeans. Yeah. I don't and think maybe putting... he bring, maybe brings his WWE championship belt. Yeah. As a bit of a, a brag. Mm-hmm. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, I mean, well, guys, we haven't got into the Hunger Games yet. That's going to be next episode. Eden's hurrying me up, not realizing that there's a fucking camera. So people who are watching will also see you going as if you're a producer on a TV show. But we obviously didn't get into the Hunger Games because we wanted to get through all those interviews that you got to hear. And I mean, fuck, if everyone, if all 14 people had sent them back, this episode would have been like so long. two hours. So the next episode, we will be entering the Hunger Games. And we've kind of decided already in the next episode that will either be That'll be it. That'll be the final one. Or we may have to split it in two parts. It's more than likely that there will be two episodes, maybe shorter than this, probably 30, 40 minutes. Yes. Of the actual Hunger but Games that where means, we have to find a winner. But that means it's going to be more interactive than ever. Yes. Because if, if it happens to be that we don't get through the entire games in the next episode, we're going to need your help just deciding maybe who are our final few and how, what happens to them, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Because I, I think these guys deserve to have some input with that. No, I agree. All right. Absolutely agree. Guys, Guys, see you next week. This is so exciting. Guys, uh, thank you for coming along and being with us for this. We're going to play it out Hell with the yeah. Hunger Games theme song. Get those suggestions into the fan mail. Link in our bio. Thank you so much to everyone. May the odds be ever in your favour.